Okay, so we're in the heady heights of the 1200s, as we've mentioned in the uh, last video, basically probably end up back down again to the 1150s and how low can we go type scenarios. But for now, we've reached 1217. Um, we're not actually doing a rating ladder climb. It's not anything to do with that. We are just looking at the standards of play that we can expect um, when we're playing online chess, basically. And we're just trying to see if they fit in with our own descriptors. And we were working on the 1100 uh, quite intently. So I think we covered off the fact that the 1100, there are there are a few that play to the standard we expect and then you can see the glaring difference between the ones that don't play at that level. So I'm fairly comfortable with the descriptor that we've got for the 1100. The 1200, um, again, I'm still confident with my descriptors because it's based on my own experience. I mean, you'll have your own experiences um, for how you think 1200 should um play if any at all you may just go i don't care i'll just play whoever i'm playing on the board that's fine i used to have that thought process i used to think well you know i don't care about the number but now all of a sudden i kind of do because it kind of just lets you know well okay this is what i can expect in this game and if it doesn't happen then that's fine the person is either flying through this is why i don't really like playing kids because i don't you don't for me, you don't really know their true level because they pick up things so quickly. Do you know, it's like one minute they're like a, a thousand level, next minute they're in the 1400s or whatever. Because I don't know what it is, their brains are made up slightly differently. However it is, they seem to be able to fly through a lot quicker. So this is why I don't like playing the kids because really when you're looking at these ratings and the descriptors, it kind of doesn't fall into play. You can do it for the early part of the game just to see if they are going to make any blunders and if they do then you can chop and change you know your playing style but if they're coming out with genius moves and you've got no chance then chalk it up to experience and then move on to the next game so we're in 1200 we're going to give it a stab and see how we go um we've not really prepared for the 1200s we thought we we're going to be in the 1100s for a bit longer um, but we shall see how we get on here. The 1200s, they like attacking, but they also like to try and defend and keep everything tight and um, protected. They like to think they can look after the king. So they know about all of these things. They know about all the basic type um, methodologies and concepts, especially about transferring into the mid game, into the end game. Only issue is the end game does fall short because of the confusing nature in which they will play and they will jump from mid then back to opening type play sounds weird but they'll progress and then if there's no tactical win all the way through from the opening through to the end then they kind of struggle a little bit in terms of where to go from after that tactical arrangement has failed if they're doing the slow plod, which usually is like pushing the pawns up and blocking everything off, making sure the king's safe, keeping a nice tight defense, they want to practice playing proper basic chess. But we'll see how we get on. We'll dive in now on this game. And let's make sure we're on the right thing. Yep, just click on here. Just make sure my screen is right. Don't want it lobbing. That looks okay. All right then. So we're going on the first one for today, 1200. I'm just going to block the pawn. Let's develop the knight. It's a 10 minutes, zero increment game. So there's no increment. So it's can't put too much thinking in because the time just disappears like anything. So we just bring the bishop here. And as we've just said, just trying to keep it basic and simple. I think they're going to go for the fried. No, they're not. Okay. Let's just bring this pawn here and we're waiting for them to overextend and make a mistake. That's the whole idea really. If you can keep your stuff basic, excuse me, now we've got this file here which we like. I'm going to try and see if we can get some, oh, well that's different, they usually take. 
So we're going to attack it. He attacks that, then we've got this knight that can come here. Or does the queen come and support? Oh, I thought the queen was going to come and support. They probably should have done that, but let's go here, see if they've made a mistake. And no, they haven't. It doesn't look like. Bishop's not going to take, is it? It's going to hide. It's going to attack the pawn here, so we're going to push here. We are a piece up. Even though they've tried to circumvent. I think we need to just take a bit of a breather, have a look at the situation, and just take the bishop off the board. Don't get fancy. The queen is going to put a check on our king. So he can have a pawn. I'm going to take the piece. I'm going to put a check on the king. It's not doing that just yet, so it gives us time to actually bring our queen here to support the pawn. It looks like they're going a bit quick now, so we can't go there. We want to protect the pawn, but the knight is also going to get hit. Don't overthink it, dude. Shall we move this knight out of the way? <sighs> We're going to lose the pawn, so I'm going to bring the rook here. I think we should... Oh, damn, he's blocking it off now, so he's getting a bit of smarts. Shall we hit and he pushes down? No. Shall we just go for the queen? Don't mind doubling the pawns. Let's not go too slow. Even though I remind myself, I still end up going too slow. He's not giving up the queen. We said they just don't want to give the queens up lately. Let's just bring the knight in. Don't want to get we stuck in. Ooh, I think we can do this, can't we? Still going to run with the queen, isn't it? He's looking for a squish on my king. Oh, stop it, stop it. Ooh. Oh, dear me. Right, let's see. Do we hit? Move the queen again, I suppose. Let's move the queen. Need to sit and wait to see what they're going to do with them. It's going to hit the pawn here with the queen. I don't think we would have been. Yeah, we can do. Oh, okay, we're not doing that now. So he's saving that. Okay, let's go here. Can't save the pawn. Can't come, can't come, can't come, can't come. We can attack his rook with a stealth. Move the rook. This pawn is still being hit. We can go and defend it. Or we can defend it here. Get immobilized big style. So, I'm, you know, I'm going to go for trading. Just hit the rook. Just hit the rook. I don't mind losing the pawn. Just take. Oh, we could go with the queen, couldn't we? Go with the queen. Now we're x-raying through to the king. Going to take. I'm sure my, you know, the rating thing said 12.17 when I started. Now it's 12.06. Have I lost the game? During the chit chat. Oh, okay, so shall we defend the pawn? It's not going to stay there for long, so I think they'll probably go for a rook exchange. King comes and attacks the pawn or something. I'm sure it said 12.17. Not that I'm greedy or anything. Shall we bring the knight here? See if we can do something with the knight. Time is 7 minutes. I don't want it to get too low. Um, put a check on the king. He then comes down for the knight. I'll take the pawn or he goes there. I'm going to go this way. They've got pawn majority on this side, so the king's going to have to act as a pawn. I think I'm thinking of just pushing the pawn here and letting them stay there, both the rook and the king. And somehow, I don't know if we can fight these pawns. Yeah, they're actually using science, aren't they? They're using science. Let's get this pawn pushed as far as it can go. Let's get the king here.
Get the king acting as a pawn. It's going to drop down. Yeah, so I'll put a check on the king. They'll go back up for the pawn, so then they'll get rid of the um, get rid of the rook, I think. Or does the knight get hit by the pawn? Either way, the rook is going to get tired, and it's probably going to end up taking. Hopefully. I was thinking they were just going to hit the knight. Bring the knight here attacking the pawn. Oh, it is as well. Let's hit the pawn. I don't think there's anything else I'm scared of now. I think we're we're happy and good to go. Yep, so now they're going to trade. And we'll take with the knights. Take with the king, yeah, we can just take with the king out. Because the knight would have just got hit, they would have won a bit of tempo. Let's take this here and let them take, push down, push down, yeah, let them take. Uh, okay, do the king. Speed, speed now. If he gets his king down there. I don't really think he can squeeze his king down. Push. Go. Let's go. Don't lose myself now. can easily lose yourself pushing the pawn up and forget and then they go they go and get a promotion push but well, they're very brave carrying <coughs> excuse me they're looking for a stalemate out of Oh, excellent. Okay, so that's um, playing against the 1200s. And let's do a breakdown of this one. I'm sure it said 1217 on there. I, I can't wait to do, look at the recap on that one because now it's there 1214. I might be wrong. Maybe it said 1207 or something. I don't know. Rex, where was I? So looking at the traits of the 1200 and what we kind of said really was the element of they like attacking but and also they understanding the transition between the mid and the end game type um, situation and they're understanding the basics of a, having a solid defense so they know all of this and they can overly protect but then it causes confusions coming into like the end game the end game is where they do have a bit of an issue and problem generally um, because once their initial attack fizzles out they tend to go back into mid game psychology and even back to opening stage and try and sort of scramble to get back forward into the end game so it's like jumping backwards and forwards between the two sorry keep it in the microphone um, so let's just see if it, any of that fell into here so we were just playing nice and steadily, just basic chess, keeping it nice and simple. They did capture, and they were coming again with an attack on the pawn. It, on the, it looks like it's an attack on the pawn. I'm not sure that they read that the knight was protecting. I can't see any other reason why the knight came down here, because usually that is when the knight comes here, it's attacking this, and this usually isn't defended. So that kind of falls into line with the attacking type thing. They still they know how to work the pieces together, but it's singular attacks. It's just the fallback from being at the eleven hundreds where the single attacks sort of take place. And now this rhythm that we've got here is basically we've 
gathered a piece so we're up a piece already a minor piece so the combinations that we've got here is that we're going to be up a minor piece because no matter what if the bishop takes we're getting the bishop back the knight takes we're getting the knight back so it's an even exchange from now we've actually gained an extra piece out of this maneuver so yep yeah, they're coming now again with the single attacks looks like the queen is attacking the pawn on this side here so we can take the bishop if the queen takes with the check then we're okay we've cut moving the uh, king out of the way there's no problems there but they actually grabbed we bring the bishop queen up now protecting and just look have a look at the psychology so yeah the queen's moving the team's not really working together but then we did have a panic on because they didn't exchange and now the good part about this maneuver that they've just done there is really it's getting the pieces together but they're actually just all defending this single pawn and when we talked about earlier about them over defending you know they suffer from over defending pieces and really then it kind of messes up the attacking formation so they, they've gone back into opening stage as far as I'm concerned here because all the all of their pieces are all trained on to protecting that one pawn there's no attack position there so once that was in place I became a little bit more relaxed because they're going to have to do three or four more moves to get back into an attack formation the queen is attacking the pawn which is a saving grace for them so we block that off and we decided to go well that's the only saving grace that they've got in our heads we may as well go and trade down now and the trade doesn't look too bad for us because we've got a minor piece up we want to get into the end game we don't want to revert back to the opening stage like what the opponent has just done here we want to be finishing it off so that's the kind of difference in understanding the 1200 psychology and as always it's not everybody but it's my generalization of what i've seen you know players over the board and also looking online as well but more so the over the board players the real life player how they basically maneuver on the board so they grabbed and we grabbed and that put the queen in the next ray through to the king so we were going to be getting the queen off the board we just wanted to get to the end game transfer nicely from the mid into the end game which i believe we did did do here so now they're having to play defense and they tried a bit of an attack coming forward we're aware of this they've got the whole majority on this side so i'm not going to sniff at that i have to try and do something about it because it might shock and surprise us so now basically there's not much else for the opponent to do because we're giving them quite a few things to think about in terms of position on the board and as you know i'm a, i'm attempting to be a positional player all the time and we went for the rationale here of just reducing down the pieces just a piece at a time it's not getting overconfident with the position it's reading what can actually happen with these pawns here can they actually do anything uh, devastating can I allow it to take if it pushes it just locks things down in here so, but you have to be very careful with these positions because you never know it it might be losing shall we throw on the evaluation at this point just to have a look because we've got the knight that's okay yeah that's fine let's take it back off again and the rest is I won't say plain sailing because you still have the bots clever my pawns are still right down on the far on the bottom side here but I did rationalize in my head that his king can't really come here can't come down here if it starts coming here it still can't hit the pawns because it can't get into any of these areas so I'm thinking calculating in my head very quickly that once I've moved my king out of the way this has got a few moves to actually get to the top and it's going to get promoted whereas if they were trying to do XYZ maneuvers inching down no guarantee that they're going to get in 
yeah what what is the best thing and what would they do i don't know if they went like this trying to come down for the pawn not there go is it okay so we move the king and then they start maybe moving the pawn we start i don't even think we'll do that anyway we just keep pushing and then for some strange reason they bring the king here yep all right oh, excuse me and then we push and then they decide to push and then we push and like i say it's going to be the pawn and then we go no so it's locked down but then it goes here comes for the pawn i'm just trying to give them a positive we go here and he says no i'm not going to go for this one i'll go for this one because he wants this one passed so we go with a check on the king so he takes yeah all right so now he's got the attempt at trying to get this pawn down here all right so this is the vision that i had in my head of well it's possible for them to do it but we're going to be fast enough because we're going to be having stronger pieces on the board but look at this position here the queen can't really come and put a check on can it it could come here and then go here like this just give him a bit of space so it looks like what i would i would do in this game is i would go well dude just take it off the board yep so i'd come like this they'd probably come maybe trying to support it for a bit just to win some time and we can bring the knights here maybe here just bring it here and look to take it off at some point it's going to go moves the king we're ready to take the pawn off the board because we're going to get these passed we believe all right so the knight's protecting this pawn here so he's not no longer getting any of that and it's our go move the, oh, excuse me move the king out of the way coming to attack this pawn they push and we just push this pawn and he pushes and we take it off the board and that's the picture that it would look like so obviously come come back up it's not their go it's our go so more pushing i don't think there's any possibility of it getting we could come and attack this pawn from here but it's have to come round and we're going to get a queen by that time so that's the logical sort of situation that would have happened so being able to see that sort of stuff helps with making those decisions in the end game like this and it's that learning that the 1200s are starting to pick up on but end games really does give them a problem and if you can take them to the end game you might stand a chance of gaining an advantage or gaining gaining a draw so yeah 1200 that's what i'm going to be aiming for while we're playing in this area as long as we're staying in the 1200s if we're going back down to the 1100s we get to practice the 1100 stuff again so that's what i'm going to be aiming for trying to push for the end game and trying to improve my knowledge and experience of the end game against them if we get to that point we want to get them into a state where they're opening is getting jumbled up with their mid game so that they don't understand what is happening for the end game transition so that's what i'm going to try and do against a normal 1200 if i'm playing a superstar 1200 as we've said i have to hold my hand up yes i can get annoyed about it you know if they're playing supremely well um i'm only human yeah but chalk it up as experience and we move on right ready for our next one and one of the key things that i always put in the back of my head is that if you are constantly winning or you're winning too many games on these types of sites questions get thrown in all the time and i'm just confirming to you, you guys again i do not use any assistive toolings whatsoever um the games are evident for themselves uh if the opponents are not playing strong then i'm not dumbing down my skills just to make them look good in any way shape i'm attempting to develop my own games as i'm going through these games here um if i'm gaining advantages i'm gaining advantages it's as simple as that just like you would do in any of your games if you're gaining advantages then maybe what you're practicing and learning is starting to pay off a little bit um so yeah 
winning too many games people instantly think that you're cheating or whatever it is i do not cheat i don't use any um tools um so just bear that in mind so we're going to jump in on the next 1200 so we need to be playing a super strong 1200 in the next game the bumpers down a bit okay so let's go I have to refresh now because it <laughs> disconnected. All right, so oh, we're playing an 1100, but let's hope this is a, a 1500 playing as 1100. Yep, that is my hope and pray. All right, so let's bring the knight through and attack the pawn. Let's take this pawn off the board. As we do, just pushing this pawn here. And we're going to take the knight off the board. Just messing with the microphone a bit in there. Might be a bit too close. All right, so they're moving really quick. So that's fairly okay. So we're going to bring the knight through, developing. So what are generally the weaknesses of the 1100s? We've covered them, we've done it to death, but it's always nice to try and reiterate it. They well, they're starting to understand the elements of teamwork. I think I'm going to go here and attack the bishop. But they're not, they don't utilize it fully. They use it in little fits and starts. Lots of blunders. We can expect lots of blunders, but you have to see the blunders in the first place. Yep, so I've mo got to monitor each of their moves to see is it a blunder. So you can expect blunders, but you have to see it and be able to take advantage of it. Okay, so we can take this pawn because we're on the bishop, so the bishop's going to be taken. So we've grabbed a pawn briefly. Let's take with the queen. So as we mentioned, the blunder side of things, one blunder occurred. They suffer from not really having a defense once the initial attack of the quick and dirty tactics disappears then they kind of struggle working their pieces together because they've only just started really practicing working their pieces together you have to be very careful though with the 1100s because they can play dynamically with those single attacks if you allow them to do that and it's not that they don't understand what chess is it's just that pulling the pieces together working them correctly um might not be their bag at this moment. So we're pushing onto the queen, the queen is protecting the knight. If they forget themselves and take, that'd be a big blunder. That's not happening. So again, the moving the queen quite a few times, but if we move this knight, what's gonna to happen to that pawn? Yeah. So we go here, greedy munching queen comes for the pawn. Queen is down, so the knight can come and attack the rook, but the rook can come here and attack the knight. There's no other magical movement that the knight can do to gain any further advantage. So I think we'll keep the knight here and they'll probably look to bring the um, pawn down to attack. If we brought the queen here, one of the rooks is obviously going to be coming opposite. But at the minute, they don't have anything that can come and fight. But now I'm going to bring the queen here, supporting the pawn, keeping sim simple chess. What other negatives can we work on? So the knight is getting activated, looking to probably defending this pawn, this area here. I think we can move the knight now. Could actually, oops, excuse me, could actually bring it onto the edge, but I'm going to bring it in the center and double the pawns. That's what I'm thinking. If we're going for sensible, we'll probably bring the knight down here and then look to try and attack the queen. I think we'll go for sensible. We'll go for sensible again this pawn is going to be going so we can't jump there straight away it's going for what did i say you've got to um be careful with the 1100s because they are dynamic in the terms of you know going for the quick and dirties yep so we can bring the knight there to block because the queen's protecting this pawn if we bring the queen here then we're attacking the knight if the queen takes the pawn then we take the knight and then he takes our knight Mm, does that work for us? Are we going to be happy with that? Mm. Here. 
don't think he's going to take the pawn though. I think he'll move the knight. He'll move the knight back. That gives us this. We can push here. And then the rook comes and attacks the queen. And then they're going to be hitting this pawn. Hmm, interesting. Attack the queen. Queen takes the pawn. Yeah, okay, I'm going to go with that. They may get the pawn back out of that. But I'm feeling okay-ish. You have to be careful with 1100s. We're hoping that this isn't going to be a 1500 playing as an 1100. Yep, so when we're looking to get mashed. Oh, and they have gone for it. Yeah, okay, cool. So they've seen what we've seen, which was this here, taking here. So he's got the pawn back. We take, he gets the knight, and he's going to be on another pawn as well. Right, so we can bring the queen back and just attack the queen and defend the pawn. Yep, so I think that works for me. That works for me. Let's do that. That's what we've calculated and just bring the queen here. So they'll be celebrating now that they've got the pawn back. So I'm happy for them. We are hitting this pawn here, so they're going to have to either move this pawn a little bit as well. All right, so what do we want to do? We want to lose. <laughs> okay, we can bring the queen here, still defending the pawn, but this pawn will be under attack. Many things to do. I do like this position still, though. Time is running out, I suppose. We could bring the rook here and hit there. Let's bring the rook here. We're attacking this pawn, so they'll probably defend the pawn. Gives us time to bring the rook here, attacking the queen. Queen's got safe haven, probably coming here, attacking the pawn. So we'll go here, then it comes here, attacking the pawn. We'll just try to keep it as simple as possible. And throughout all the games that we've shown and displayed, it's all simple, straightforward stuff and easily explained. There's no particular magic to any of it. It's not gone there, it's gone further back. I suppose we can just attack now. But he takes the pawn, so we're going to have to bring this pawn here before we even think of doing any of that. So the rook's come in, it's hitting the pawn that's protected, so we're going to just hit the queen like we planned. But as we know, they don't exchange the queens anymore. They go dancing around. Oh! Well, that's a shocker. Well, it's even on the pawn, so it could end up being a draw, couldn't it, really? Now our rooks are in the centre of the board, which is not a very good position for the rooks, is it? So we're going to have to readjust, come back around, whereas he's going to simply be able to or even come and attack this pawn here, which is probably better because readjusted. We'd have to push this, slide this in the middle, slide this down, slide across. A lot of, lot of adjustments with the rook. So pawn majority wise, we're in the end game now. I can't see a problem with that. He may be thinking of trying to do something like this to disturb the center a bit more. Yeah, exactly. So I'm going to push this pawn, like we said in our mini calculation. It's got pawn majority on this little end here, which could cause problems. We do have pawn majority in the center, but like we said, we're going to have to jostle. Can't put the king here because it's just blocking the rook. It's no good. So will we be allowed to do all this manoeuvring with the rooks? They shouldn't really allow us it. They should be putting pressure on our pieces somehow. We can push there. We've got a proper passer then if he does that. Time-wise, not too bad. We're hitting the blitz mode now. So we should be pushing this pawn, I think, just to stop doubles here, maybe. I know the focal point is on trying to get the rook here, but he does have the majority, like we said. So we'd need to focus on, if we can, defend it. I know when I'm talking, it sounds like I know what I'm doing. And it really 
like any person who's talking about chess in the games um we don't really know yeah we we are assuming and hoping that the opponent doesn't make a better move okay right so he's coming for the rook we're wanting to move the rook anyway but now does that change the picture at all and we come here and attack and then double the pawns i don't think doubling the pawns in this situation is okay come here he's going to obviously support the pawn with either well maybe not that one because that'll get taken so he supports the pawn with this and we aren't going to get that pawn up so i think we need to just bring the rook here and come behind the pawn yeah let's do that that's what we planned long ago yeah because just because you're talking about the game doesn't mean that you know anything you know all you're doing is airing out your thoughts as to what you're wanting to planning to do if i wasn't talking about it these are the things i'm thinking and at this point in time i'm thinking i would probably prefer to be white but just for a brief moment because of the way my where my rooks are I think if we get here, this is definitely... But if that does come down, we can push past, so that's not too bad. Now he's looking to double onto the pawn, you see. But um, in my head, I'm still thinking if he does do that, we can push past. The rook's not going to take. So is he going to try and get rid of this pawn by pushing here? And if we take, then he's got a proper passer on this side. Right, so whatever they're doing, so maybe we bring the rook here. I, I was coming behind this pawn, but maybe we need to be coming behind this pawn. But this rook doesn't have any support. So we go behind here, doubles. King moves. And then he does something. Does that, but that just pushes up, surely. And pushes takes. they might not be doing any of that so do, time is running out come on come on move 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 what do we want to do shall we just go with the safe but, but if he keeps his rook there and he comes on this one yeah so if he's moved there to come here to attack this so depending on where he moves now, if he moves there, we can always swing and support, although it's not really getting much. So they're not doing any of that. They're just pushing their pawns further down the board. I'm going to move the king. And obviously another non-move. Oh, the rook's coming, putting a check on the king now then, is he? Or is he putting more on here? Don't know. Just push this pawn, and if he does come down, maybe come with the king here. Or do we bring the king further across? Don't really want it hit seeing all of that. I'm going to bring the king here. Now he's got rooks in the centre of the board, not linked up, but he does have quick access to doubles. So end game would cause them problems you know 1100s 1200s end games should be causing them problems
All right, so he's looking maybe for a double here. I don't really see what he's doing. Maybe squeezing here and doing some stuff. Because we're not really going to be challenging the pawn, are we? If we challenge the pawn, he doesn't have to take. If he takes, takes, then we've kind of isolated the pawn, haven't we? That's not really a good position to be in. Anything else? Maybe we come here with the rook now then and attack this pawn. So they're going to probably move the pawn. The rook's not coming to defend because that'll get taken, that'll get taken. I think just moving the pawn down, but then move the pawn, we can take this pawn with the rook. Don't know if that's a good position or not. But it does open up space in front of our king as well. So I think this rook is going behind here, actually. All said and done, yeah. So it's going behind there. So it's going into a position it doesn't really want to be in, but it is opposite our king, which is a plus, isn't it? Yeah. But for a brief moment, it feels like it's out of the game. This pawn is going to be touching us. Do we push this pawn now just to try and get this center pawn up? I think we're going to do that. But he can also push his pawn down onto our rook. So is that not the right pawn to be pushing? Is it this pawn here? Because if he does take, then we take, and then his rook comes and takes. But again, it's that splitting of the pawns, isn't it? Which isn't a very good look. So we push. He hits us. We come down. He's not doing that, so he's... Going a bit quick, so we can push onto the pawn. Takes, rook takes. Doesn't take though, he doesn't take. His pawn's just going to hit us. Going to push because he has the advantage of extra pawns over here. I think what's happened here. Oh, my time is running out. That's what he's saying. My time is running out to take with the pawn because we we're going to be taking this pawn then we can double up but we can't do that just yet so we're going to push this probably thinking pushing past here time's running out man cracky getting into it or he attacks the pawn something don't know what they're going to do it does attack the pawn um, what we were planning to do then? Just come here anyway. I thought I had a different plan in my head, but it disappeared. So they're catching up us on us time wise, which is good. We're definitely in bullet mode now, and they've got a little space here attacking our king. I think we need to move the king going to be doubling on the pawn actually he can attack this pawn here can't he and then he's got the passer he is attacking the pawn as well he's doing it well he's attacking twice let's take Let's go here. Let's hit this pawn. Take. Let's go here. Go behind the pawn. Go 
stops the pawn, so I have to move my king out of the way. Yes, all makes sense. Twenty five seconds. Raggy. It's not much time to do anything, is it? Boom 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 boom. Boom boom boom. Boom boom. boom. With three seconds, do we think they can do something? Management of time, a key aspect of playing these time controlled chess games. And the majority of chess games are time controlled. Very few where you'll see an infinite time control. So management of time is definitely key, which has given us the advantage in this particular game. Okay, um, so that's bumped us up to 1221. I'm very scared to play another game, really. Uh, I think I want to play another game just to take that whooping. Let's just go straight in and um, maybe the last one we'll see. Off we go. What have we got? 1183, so they're close to being a 1200. So working the pieces together, but they like attacking transition to the from to the mid to the end might be a bit squishy let's just put some pressure on here and let's castle let's get the bishop out and uh, see where we're going with that always for the b pawn don't forget let's just bring this knight here dancing with the knight so they've done two knight moves so what is it that they're actually going with here some sort of set play thing uh, that doesn't look too dangerous this knight is protecting here have they not seen that the knight's protecting there maybe they haven't it's going to open the queen up always for the b pawn yep so there were more to set to come there I'm going to attack the queen so the transition through to the mid from the mid through to the end this is where we're looking at trying to Hopefully think that they're going to make a mistake going to bring the knight here attacking the bishop It's happy probably to let the bishop be taken. Yep, just to bring the pawns back in line So we're going to push here. We do have the bishop blocker at the minute All right, nice one. So let's see what we want to do with this knight. Shall we move this knight this way? And okay, so they've got I think we can take an attack, but it's just going to drop the pawn. Yeah, they're taking. Oh, okay. They're not dropping the pawn just yet. Shall we get the knight up in here? This B pawn's getting attacked. Yep, as we speak. All right, so we're in the end game now, and we can get one of the rooks off the board. It's not saying it's over, but, you know, hopefully it's the start of a uh, disadvantage for the opponent because they do have a knight and it's a flexible knight, it's a flexible piece. I'm actually going to hit this pawn first and take and look how fast the move with the knight then though. Can we go here? No, he's going to come down for the pawn. Okay, let's push. Look how fast they're moving with it. Where's he got, got a fork? No, oh, it's just hitting the rock pawn. Got to check on my king. No, no, no. Okay, let's just push. Let's hit this rook. Take. 
Right, that'll be the last one. I can hear the police coming anytime soon. Woo, woo, woo. Anyway, so fairly interesting session. I think this session really, um, just for me, is just that focal point on um, we're in the 1200 area now. Um, but I am very concerned, obviously, that um, we've gained some advantages in a few of the games recently. And it's almost like post-traumatic stress disorder. And that's a genuine thing, isn't it, really? Post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, from, well, it must have been, was it three years ago, two years ago? Three, might have been two years ago when it happened, where a group of people reported me. Um, I didn't know at the time, you know, my game just got stopped and then I was put into like, like um, it was my own tournament. I got put into like this pot of fair play violators and uh, I didn't even know. Nobody told me anything. Nobody said, well, we've got a query about your account or anything like that. I was just instantly put into this, this pot and I'm still smart into this day about winning chess games online. And I shouldn't feel this way because I know I've done nothing wrong whatsoever in the slightest. So, yeah, I'm still suffering PTSD with this um, chess thing in terms of people reporting people and stuff like that. Um, you need to get your facts straight first. You need to actually even come and talk to me and message me or something and say, well, we've got a concern about this. And then I'll take you through exactly what happened. You don't just put throw them into um, a pot of fair play violators that's so bad form anyway hopefully i won't have any more sessions where i'm discussing that but i'm just trying to make it clear so that we get an understanding as to why i'm hovering around these lower areas here going through the explanations and the descriptors for these types of behaviors so that at least you understand where my thought processes are coming from when I'm actually working in these through these um, levels. And if a higher level player is playing absolute pants moves, then they're going to get a, a negative response back. And if they're leaving pieces on pre, as you would say, then I'd be f a fool not to take it. They're not GMs. And even if it was a GM and they were playing that bad, then they deserve to lose the game or lose that piece or lose the position. Strategically, they're probably not sound. Maybe they fought too much and they just over... What's the word now? They underestimated the position or underestimated the game because they were so focused on looking at the number at the side of my name that they just lost the will to actually put any thought or process into the game and they left everything open and they ended up in bad positions. All the exercises I've been doing on the channel have basically been there to prove the thought process, the answer to chess process um, that we're working on. And that's the methodology. Those are the concepts. Those are the ideas and the practical side of things, understanding the actual opponent, understanding their behaviors, understanding the psychology behind chess, so there's a whole heap of different things going on within the game of chess. It's not just looking at it and going, oh, it's zero, zero, zeros. He can't have done that against me because I'm a 2,000 plus player or something. Yes, it is physically possible because you played crap.